So Margaret Heffernan, author of three books, Serial Entrepreneur, um, we're here talking about blindness, willful blindness. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk a little bit about, you know, we, we look at diversity of teams from importance of innovation, but not from this issue of willful blindness. Talk a little bit about the challenges with how we put our teams together. So I'm really interested in how companies manage to ignore risk but it's the same mechanism that means that they also fail to see opportunities for innovation. Yeah. So on the one hand, why couldn't banks see how dumb subprime mortgages were? Yeah. And on the other hand, how come a brilliant company like Google can miss social networking? And I think a lot of that has to do with how diverse is your team mm. and how far have you created a climate of safety in which different people can stay different. Because what you find in a lot of companies is they hire a very diverse crew, mm. and then they all homogenize. And as they all conform to whatever the cultural norm is, you actually lose mm. the value of the asset you've spent so much time and effort and money recruiting. Well then how do we, how do, we do that? How do we keep them different? Well, I think- Because it, I thought the problem was we were hiring too much the yeah, same, yeah. but you're well, right, we are, even with we're diversity. We're hiring too much the same, but also, we're not creating the conditions in which they're allowed to remain different. And I think in particular, right. the real ch leadership challenge is, how do I create a, an environment in which conflict is okay, mm. in which debate is okay, in which challenge is okay? And I think this is really hard because most people come into a work environment assuming yeah. that conflict is bad, right. that challenge is bad, and that if you stick out, you'll get your head chopped off. So what do I have to do? Because I, because I look, I was stunned by that mm. statistic in our own room of Gazelle's companies. You would think they're, you know, progressive, and we're looking at two thirds of the audience thinking seventy-five percent of their people will not raise issues. Will and not concerns. raise issues, and this is in our audience. That's so, right. All right, what do we have to do tomorrow to get right. people to raise issues? So I think there are a couple of things. I think it's really important for leaders to have thinking partners, sparring partners, mm. so that they can model the kind of debate that they want to see. Okay. Um, one psychologist who I've written about um, in my new book talks about how you have to have more than one lion in the company. Because mm. if you have two lions, they'll fight, and if they fight, that gives other people permission to fight too. You now, know, obviously, thinking... this is cordial conflict. It's not, you know, brutal conflict. But it's really about modeling the kind of challenge and debate that you want to see. If you don't mm. see that at the top, nobody will believe anything you say about wanting to see it at other levels of the organization. You know who came to mind? Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Yep. And and that Warren at this last meetup, there was a sense that there's he's bringing two guys up right. to replace him, both right. he and Charlie, because he sees this power yeah. of having two lions. And I think what's really important is it's not a contest. Okay. You know, so it's not about what a lot of companies do, which is, well, let's get a whole bunch of guys to compete to be CEO. All right. Because that's going to create secrecy. It's going to create the withholding of information. It's going to mean people start trying to game the system. So it's not that. It's a constructive form of conflict which leaders should be able to model mm. in order to teach the people around them how to do it. One of the best CEOs I've ever known makes her senior leadership team change hats. So the tech guy has to argue uh. the marketing budget. The marketing guy has to argue the sales budget, which means they have to see how the whole company fits together, what the dependencies are, and how much they need each other. That I love. So you got to literally take somebody else's side. That's right. Also talk about it. It struck me a very simple idea of take a day and work on the business. Yeah, this is what I call the working on the company instead yes. of working in the company day. And it takes a lot of preparation. Hmm. But I think one of the big leadership challenges is we all know there's more knowledge at the edge than at the center, hmm. right? The people on the ground always know what's going on. The boss quite often doesn't. Yeah. So if you say to people, what works here? What doesn't work here? What do we need to fix? They'll tell you. And if you then make them part of the process of devising the solutions, mm. you start to get a workforce that acts like owners. Now I do believe it's better if they are owners too, mm. right? But even if they aren't, that they're thinking about the company as something they're responsible for. 
So I think one of the key parts of a really effective collaborative culture is that everybody feels responsible. Mm. It isn't just the leader who's responsible. Everybody feels that what they do really matters and they take responsibility for the whole project or the whole department. They don't, if you like, outsource responsibility to bosses. Yeah, and that's why I think it's important. You know, we, we're just so busy and I think what struck me is that I don't think anyone's doing it on purpose. It's just not the time even to speak up and the fact that we carve it out and we designated that, look, right now we've got a few hours we need to know yeah. and we need to hear. So I think the other problem is, you know, we have this mentality of soloists. He who travels fastest travels alone. Mm. You know, just get a couple of smart people to make a couple of smart decisions. Mm. You know, and the truth of the matter is that if that's what you're doing, what's everybody else there for? Yeah. And I think that, you know, we hire people, but then we don't usually get very much out of them because we haven't built a sufficiently collaborative culture, either inside or outside our organizations. Yeah. And we haven't really dug deep enough to figure out how do you make teams feel safe and build enough trust and respect in them that people will truly share what's on their minds, which may be worries or it may be great new ideas. And so that's what we've got to look for. Margaret, yeah. thank you so much for being here at the Fortune My pleasure, it's great share. as always. You Thanks, Vern. Take care.